So today I'm here to talk about drug policies and drug reform in the United States of America. Um, as things stand now, the Drug Enforcement Agency is the federal arm, the federal bureau agency responsible for enforcing and scheduling drug offenses. Schedule 1 being the highest and the highest offense and Schedule 5 being the lowest. Um, the rules for the different schedules of the drugs are just absolutely not something I'm going to get into, but they're very vague and they're not tested very well um, in terms of studies conducted on the drugs themselves um, because that's not the DEA's responsibility to research or develop um, information behind any of these substances strictly to enforce the prohibition of them. Um, any research should be the responsibility of the F Food and Drug Administration, in my opinion, the FDA. Um, but that research still just isn't isn't being produced because those drugs are illegal. So how are they supposed to conduct research on drugs that are illegal? But um, as far as the actual enforcement of these policies goes, um, currently 47% of of people who are incarcerated are incarcerated on drug charges. Um, that includes traffickers as well as people who are using drugs, um, people who are addicted to drugs, people who have substance use disorder. Um, we're locking up American citizens, is what we're doing. Um, and we're rationalizing it by saying that they are morally corrupt for bringing these illicit substances into their communities, into our communities. And the system in place that criminalizes them and sends them to jail as opposed to getting them help and reforming them and introducing them to resources that can lead to them living an alternate lifestyle such as educational resources or um you know rehabilitation centers those those things haven't existed for a very long time and since the war on drugs and the war on crime was um you know kind of made official in the 1980s uh, we have seen a dip, a big drop in crime rates, uh, but the incarceration rate has been rising at a vastly disproportionate rate to the, that drop in crime. And so it's not that we're removing criminals that would be repeat offenders. I mean, it's partially that, but we're also just removing a massive number of people from from. I've got the stat here, the number of people currently incarcerated, but I don't think that's necessary. I think we're all aware that it's I mean, there's a there's a mass incarceration problem in the United States of America. We have more um, people incarcerated per capita than any other country on earth by a wide margin, um, and so that's an issue. Um, the program I'm specifically here to talk to you today about is Family Recovery Court as well as other drug courts. Um, Drug courts and diversion programs are designed to help people who are convicted of substance offenses, people caught with illicit substances, um, as opposed to punishing them, sending them to jail, giving them fines. We put them in programs, and so long as they can meet the conditions of that program, the charges are dropped. Now, some people would argue that that's soft on crime, and during the last 30, I'm sorry, was it 40 years now, since the 80s, the war on crime has really revolved around the idea of not wanting to be soft on criminals, not wanting people to get away with a crime, making sure that they're punished. So I want to be up front and say that drug courts are not soft on crime. They revolve around responsibility and accountability, but as opposed to punishing people who have made mistakes, they find a way to rehabilitate them and give them resources to not make those mistakes again in the future. Um, that's the whole point of drug court. Um, courts in general. Family recovery court in particular should be adopted by every state in the union because it targets not just general drug courts in general, but it specifies families that are suffering from substance use disorder. And that's super important because families that are suffering from substance use disorder have children that are at a higher risk of having parents that are incarcerated, having parents that have mental illness, and other things that essentially add up to their ACE score. If so if you're familiar with the Kaiser Permanente study and the ACE scores, you gotta keep in mind, like, you're lowering ACE scores, you're 
improving mental and physical health over a lifetime for these kids by providing reasonable mental health care and other resources to their parents by helping them to achieve sobriety and holding them accountable for their mistakes and their actions.